was already appreciative of my, my friend, Dr. Jules, for the invitation. But I must admit that next time I see him, I have to give him a big hug for allowing me to be in God's house today. I have been blessed. I have been blessed. And this is what worship looks like. Amen. The theme called the greatness leading others while following Christ. Who will you follow? And to all of our young people, to the, the gems who I congratulate today, let me just pause to congratulate the church for how you feed into the life of young people. Amen. And uh, Every time I go home back to Cleveland, the Southeast Church, I always thank those who are there for the way that they fed into my life. While I was away at school at Pine Forge Academy and my, my mother didn't have a way to pay my bill, it were groups at the church who got together to send Bernard some money. While I was at Oakwood, the same thing. So now that I'm a grown man and have a family of my own, I have never forgotten what they did to feed into my life. And it were organizations like the gyms and our youth department and our youth choirs and our pathfinders, our ventures and our schools that feed into the lives of young people. And let me just say as a first suggestion to our young people, never forget what the church has done for you. Because you are where you are today and, and where you will be in the future as a result of the prayers of parents and grandparents and organizations in your church and praying mothers of the church and fathers of the church and those who have paved the way for us. And so never forget what God has done for you through the church. And don't, when you get a few letters behind your name, think that you're so big that you can leave the church. Amen, somebody. Amen. Because uh, God has always made a way for me, and I want to just appreciate what he has done for me. It is a privilege to be here today, and, and so don't start looking at your watches now. <laughs> uh, this is the time, almost just about the time where I usually get up, so I feel good. <laughs> but I won't, keep you, I won't keep you long. I just want to spend a little time in, in, in God's Word. Please turn with me in your Bibles to, to John chapter 2. John chapter 2, beginning there with the first verse. John chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. And the Word declares, reading from the New King James Version, the Word declares, on the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now, both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. 
Now there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the man of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said to him, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. I have entitled our message for today simply Dirty Pots. Dirty Pots. I want to sing a song for you, and my church members know that I love to sing. And so I'd just like to sing a song. It, it's become my theme song. Listen to what God has. If I can help somebody.
So, Father in heaven, we thank you for allowing us to be reminded of the fact that when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Father, I pray now that as we open your word that again you might use me like you've never used me before. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary. And Father, I pray that each of us, especially our young people today, might know that their living will not be in vain. We give you praise. As always, Father, I pray that no one will leave here lost soul. So let the words of my mouth, the meditation of every heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Let everyone say, Amen. 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 Dirty pots. Here we find that Jesus had been invited to a wedding feast at Cana. And he had brought along with him his disciples. We are told that more than likely the wedding party were relatives of Mary and Joseph. And as a result, we conclude that Jesus was very close and familiar with the members of this wedding party. And so Jesus had accepted the invitation to come into the midst of their situation. I can imagine that when his family sat down and reflected on what went right during the wedding feast some weeks later, that they had to conclude that the first thing that they did right was to invite Jesus into their situation. When I look back over my life and I think about all that has transpired in my life, the good times and the bad times, I have to conclude that the best thing that I've ever done was to invite Jesus into my situation. Like the, song, like the song writer said, James Cleveland said, Jesus was the best thing that has ever happened to me. For you see, when I was young, a young man, I had no idea really what that song was talking about. I had no idea really what the older folk were talking about because I had not experienced much of life since then, but I want you to understand that, that now that I have lived a bit, I can truly testify that the best thing that I've ever done was that day when I said, Jesus, come into my life. One thing that I've never, that I've learned is that when Jesus comes into your life, that he will come in and he will make everything better. Your life will be better. Your marriage will be better. Can I get a witness, somebody? Yes. Your home, your home will be better. When, when Jesus come into your life, the best thing I've ever done when I sat as a senior in, at Pine Forge and I said, Jesus, yes, I was baptized before, but now I want to be baptized because I now understand that Jesus must be a part of my life. One thing about Jesus is that he never turns down a situation. So here they are at the wedding feast, and we find that in the first century that the custom was that when they had a wedding, that it lasted for several days. And I'm glad that that, that was the custom back then and not the custom today. For you see, I have a daughter and my understanding is that when the daughters get married, that the parents of the bride are largely responsible for the cost of the wedding. I 
don't know about you, but, but I would just have to break that custom because, excuse my language, but I ain't feeding folk for several days. As a matter of fact, my, my, my daughter, who is now 24, and she's not, she's not even talking marriage, marriage yet, but I'm already trying to talk her down so that she can downsize a bit because I recognize that weddings ain't cheap. Can I get a witness, somebody? But back then, Weddings, they, 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 they lasted for, for several days, and the longer they lasted, the more joyful they seemed to become. They, there was one big celebration. But in the midst of their joyful celebration, I can imagine that their wedding, that, that if, if their weddings were anything like the weddings that I've seen down here, that, that there was laughter everywhere. The good food was, was flowing now. The musicians that were providing the joyous music. Dancing was in the room. The electric slide had broken out on the floor. <laughs> but then it was discovered that the wine had run out. Now, to you, that might not seem a, a, a big deal, but back in the first century, when the host provided wine, that was a sign of hospitality. It was a sign of respect for your guests. The wine was, was a sign of a joyful atmosphere. You did not want to be the family that had guests at your wedding with no wine. You would be the talk of the town. There would be shame heaped on the family name. It would have been a disastrous situation for the wedding feast to end in such a humiliating note. And so now the family is frustrated because the wine has won out. But in looking up this story, I just have four points that I want to leave with you. Number one, the human limitation. Number two, the sovereign situation. Number three, Mary's declaration. And number four, the divine solution, the human limitation. But the family had no way to get the wine that they needed for the wedding feast. There was a human limitation. There, were, there are things that happen in our lives that remind us that we are only human that we have no power to get us out of our situation. Money can't help us, status can't help us, friends can't help us, mama can't help us, daddy can't help us, our degrees can't help us. Can I get a witness, somebody? Our only answer, his name is Jesus. Prime, prime, prime example, it was, it was in March. It was just in March when my my, 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 my brother-in-law woke up to find that my oldest sister was in a coma. I was away in Bermuda doing a week of prayer, and all of my siblings were scattered around, around the country, and, and, the call, and the call went out that, that, my, that my oldest sister, the oldest, I, there's four boys and four girls, she's the oldest girl, and all of us had to rush to San Antonio because, because something had happened that we did not expect, but when we got to the bedside, we realized that we had no power to change the situation. All of the prayers, all the prayers went up. We joined hands and, and we prayed for my oldest sister and, and we, we stood there and agonized and prayers, went, went, uh, and prayers went up and tears fell from our eyes. But the situation did not, did not change because you see, there was, there was some human limitations and we realized that no matter how much money we had, no matter how big the houses that we had, no matter how fast the cars that we had, they had no power to get my sister off of her bed. 
but I've just come to give you some good news. And that just a few weeks ago, we all met in, in Las Vegas to celebrate the graduation of one of my nephews. And, and, and I did not expect to see my oldest sister there, but when I got out of the Uber and I stood and I stood in line to get into the graduation, who did I see but my oldest sister? God, God has somehow reminded us that even in our human limitations that God is still able. So let me remind, let me remind you, especially our young people, that when you go through life, you will face some human limitations. When you go through life, you will realize that no matter who you are, no matter, no matter where you've come from, no matter what degrees you have, there will always be human limitations, no matter what kind of book knowledge you have, and no matter how many scriptures you know, how many quotes from Ellen White, I want you to understand that there will always be some human limitations. It was after maybe 10 years of marriage when the doctor came into the room with my wife and I and told us that my wife had cancer. I want you to understand they did not teach me how to handle that at Oakwood. They did not teach me how to handle that in seminary. I had to bow my head and realize that I had to call on the God <laughs> who's able human limitations and God has been good as a matter of fact my wife is not here today because she's in Ohio in Columbus my moving my daughter to a different apartment and I want you to understand that God has been good she's well and and and, and I'm looking forward to many more years of marriage amen somebody human 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 limitation so 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 write that down young people I want you to never forget it never forget it that there are some human limitations that no matter how big you think you are I want you to understand that you will always face things in life that remind you that there are human limitations human limitations no matter no matter what you have there will always be human limitations but then there was a sovereign situation. Mary realized that it was a sovereign situation. She goes over to Jesus and says, they have no wine. Mary understood that the solution to the problem was in Jesus. I don't know about you, but I have a sovereign situation. A situation that only God can solve. Can I get a witness, somebody? Yeah. I, have, I, I, have, I have a son, and, 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 I, and I pray for my son. He's, he's just turned 20. And, 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 and one thing I want to just share with parents, when we have done all that we can, when we have brought them to Sabbath school, when we have prayed the prayers, I want you to understand that, that, that we come often face to face with a sovereign situation. A situation that, that, that only God can deal with. Can I get a witness, somebody? So let me, so let me, so let me, so let me encourage, let me encourage you today. Keep on praying. Keep on placing your children in God's hand, because God is able. <laughs> I got a, I got a, I got a sovereign, sovereign situation that only God can help us with. But Mary, Mary remembered that what the angel told her way back at his conception that his name should be called Jesus because he would save his people from their sins. She knew that if there was anyone who could get them out of this situation, his name was Jesus. So she goes, she goes over to Jesus and she says, they have no wine. And Jesus says, woman, 
What have I to do with you? And right away we think that Jesus was being disrespectful, but we must remember that that was not being said in our time. It was being, it was being said in their time. And, and so we must understand that this was not a words of disrespect, but this, these were words of honor and respect for his mother. Woman, what have I to do with you? Sovereign situation. But then there's Mary's declaration. Mary goes over to the servants and says, whatever, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Do exactly what he tells you to do. Because whatever he tells you to do will get us out of our situation. Because guess what? We must remember that, that when we do what God has called us to do, that it will get us out of our situation. That's why I always choose Jesus because I understand that in many situations in life, a choice got us into the mess. And guess what? A choice will get us out. And I recognize that if I grab hold of the hand of Jesus, that in the end, everything is going to be all right. No matter, no matter how crazy, no matter how ridiculous it may sound, do it. No matter how uncomfortable it makes you, do it. Because I want you to understand that life will be better as a result of doing what God tells you to do. Can I get a witness, somebody? It may not be popular, but life will be sweet. Can I get a witness, somebody? When you do what God tells you to do, I want, you to, I want you to understand that, that when I got married, I had one suitcase. When, when, I, when, when I left Oakwood, I had, I had one suitcase. When I left Cleveland, I had one suitcase. But, but I decided that I was going to do what God had told me to do. And, and every month, no matter how tough it is, uh, we are faithful in our tithe and faithful in our offering. Can I get a witness, somebody? Can I get a witness, somebody? God has called me to be a faithful husband, a good husband, and a, a good father. And I, I strive to do that. I, I, I somehow I lead my family in worship. And somehow I lift my wife and my children up before the Lord. I've tried to do all that God has called me to do. I try to be the pastor that God has called me to do. I try to lift people up, those who are downtrodden. I try to do what God has called me to do. When I see a homeless person, I, I try my best to reach out and let them know that God still cares for them. I have tried to do what God has called me, called me to do. And so I just want you to understand that when you do what God calls you to do, that God will take care of you. I don't know, I don't know how my children were able to make it through Oakwood. I don't understand it. We didn't, we didn't have, people told us when we had children, well, you know you got to save all this money because college is going to be, we didn't have, we didn't have anything saved up, but God made a way out of no way. Can I get a witness, somebody? I don't know, I don't, I, I, I can't tell you how in the world that now my daughter is in, in the law school and, and, and she tells me that she's at the top of her class. I don't understand it, how God did it. We trusted in God and we, and we put them in schools that, that maybe didn't have the best. Hello, Walls. Maybe didn't have the best. But we did what God told us to do. And as a result of that, God has taken care of my family. And now I can stand back and say, you know, God, I have realized that you are true to your word. That when I, when I heard that, 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 that gray-haired elder standing up in the back of the church, and I remember it like it was yesterday. I was just a young man at prayer meeting. My mother used to bring me to prayer meeting. 
And that gray-haired elder stood up and said, Once I was young, and now I'm old, and yet have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And now, and now I can stand up with some gray in my head, and I can say, you know what? Once I was young, and now I'm old, and yet... Have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging? When you do what God tells you to do, he will take care. Write that down, young people. He will take care. Mary's declaration. God always shows us clearly, clearly the path that he wants us to take. Don't close your ears. I found that God will always strive to pave the way for us. He will send, he will send folk to us, parents constantly. Our elders will constantly speak in our ears, trying to get us on the right. Don't close your ears. God always shows us the path to take. And then there was the divine solution. Jesus told the servants, he said, you see those six pots over there that stood near the entrance? And they were there for the purpose of ceremonial cleaning. People would come in the door and they would wash their dirty hands in those pots. Symbolic of the cleansing of the body. Dirty pots. This would be similar to drinking out of the bathroom sink or out of the bathtub. Jesus said, I want you to take those same pots that held 20 gallons of water each, and I want you to fill them up to the brim with water. And I thought about that thing, and I thought about the fact that Jesus could have used anything that he chose to use, but he chose to use dirty pots. And then I thought about me, and I said, you know what, God? You could have used anybody that you wanted to use but you looked at me a snotty nose stuttering boy from Cleveland Ohio and you laid your hands on me and you said you can do a work for me because little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand I'm praising, I'm praising God today because he specializes in using dirty pots. Jesus said that all I am doing is asking that you allow me to fill you up. Allow me to fill you up, your, your dirty, dirty, dirty vessel. Jesus said, allow me to fill you up. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. But now I see nothing but dirty pots. Jesus specializes in using dirty pots. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Purify me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be water whiter than snow. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all of our sin, God specializes in using dirty parts. I want you to understand that, that there, there is a, a, a divine solution that God has. God has the answer for my life. And if you don't get anything else, I want you to understand, young people, that if, if God is first and 
best in your life, then God will be able to use you. God will be able to take you places you never thought you would go. God will be able to give you experiences that you never thought you would experience. But you must first give him your life. <laughs> But then, but then, but then, but then there, 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 there is a fifth point. I know I told you I had four, but, but there is a, a fifth one that I'm, I'm reminded of for, 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 for the servant. The, 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 the servant came over, the, the master, the master of the feast. He, he came by, he said, hold up. It's customary that those who are in charge of running the, 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 the wedding feast, that they will put out their best wine first. And allow everybody to drink the wine. But then they put out the inferior wine. But but the bridegroom, he has chosen to save the best for last. And so I just want to come and, and tell each of you today that if you put your trust in God, uh, don't give up because I can testify and say that he saved the best for last. Don't give up. Keep your hand in God's hand. Don't get weary because he saved the best. For last, every day gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. Can I get a witness, somebody? Every day I serve him, it gets better and better and better. I want you to know that he saved the best for last. And, and that's you and say, I've been in for 10 years, and I've been in the way for 20 years, and I've been in the way for 30 years, and I've been in the way for 40 years, and I've been in the way for 50 years. But I've just come to let you know, don't give up now. Keep your eyes on the prize because Jesus always saves the best for last. Let that be your testimony that God is first and best in your life because he will always take care of you. Those who are going away to school, keep your eyes on Jesus. Your parents can't watch you 24-7. Hello, somebody. Keep your eye on Jesus. Stay prayed up. Go to church. I said go to church. Go to church. Because you see every Sabbath that you miss, it will be easier to miss the next one. Can I get a witness, somebody? Because you see, that's, that's a ploy of the devil. And before you know it, you are, you, you, you are not interested anymore. Keep your eyes on Jesus. No matter how many degrees you get, no matter how, how, how much money starts rolling in, keep your eyes on Jesus because he will take care of you. Can I get a witness, somebody? Yeah. Every head is bowed. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. This has just been my testimony today. That if God can use me, he can use anybody. He can use anybody. He can use anybody. Just ordinary people God uses ordinary people He chooses people just like you and me who are willing to do as, as he commands God he chooses people who are willing to give him all it doesn't matter how small 
your own may seem to you because a little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. If you hear this body, if your eyes closed, this appeal is a simple appeal. God is calling each of us to have a serious relationship with him. He's calling us, no matter where we've been, no matter what we've done, to give it all to him. Our dirty pots, those, those things that we are ashamed of, God says, give them to me because I can use you. And so the appeal is simple today. Those who would simply like to say, I want to give Jesus all of my life. I, I want to put my life in his hand. You may have been here every Sabbath. You may have grown up in the church, but you know what? You've never really, you've never really had a serious relationship with him. And you know that your life is not where God wants you to be. But God is calling you today. And so I wonder if there's one brave soul, one brave soul who'd just like to come and join me and say, I want to accept Jesus as my Savior. I want to accept Jesus Christ as first and best in my life. Is there one today? Is there one today? God is calling you. God is calling you. Is there one? Is there one today? Is there one today? Is there one today? Don't let this moment pass. Is there one? Is there one today? God is calling you. God is calling you. God is calling you. Tomorrow is not promised to you. God is calling you. Quick story. My a nephew of mine has a sister in Kansas City. She's going through a custody dispute with her with her ex-husband. This past Wednesday, she went by his house to pick up her two children, and he shot her dead seven times. Tomorrow is not promised. She's just 35 years of age. Tomorrow is not promised to any one of us. So is there one today? This is it. Won't beg today. Is there one? So, Father, we thank you so much for your mercy and your grace. I pray a special prayer upon each of us. I pray a special prayer, especially upon the young people. Father, keep them. Father, there's critical times in their lives when they're making decisions. Father, I pray that they would choose you as master of their lives. Keep the devil out of their way. Father, we know that the devil is angry, and he brings all kinds of temptations their way. So, Father, we pray that you might put a hedge about them. Be with them as they travel to and fro. Be with them as they drive on the roads. Be with them in their studies. And, Father, I just pray that they will be with them as they choose their friends. I pray, Father, that you would watch over them as they choose their life partners. I pray in a special way that, Father, that you would bless them as they seek to find their niche in your church. And then, Father, we will give you all the praise, honor, and glory for what you will do for them and for each of us. As we look forward to your soon return, I pray that each of us might live our lives according to your holy will. Forgive us, cleanse us, and make us whole. We thank you in Jesus' name that everyone say, amen.